Hey guys, this is Mitch with the Department of Bad Ideas, and let's talk about the syndicates that we got now. So, I've been waiting on this subject a little bit, because the initial release of it was a little bit bumpy. It was still good, don't get me wrong, I still really liked it, but uh, obviously there were a lot of kinks they needed to get out of it, and still we're pretty low on the augments. But, with the recent changes that they've made, with the recent update, as well as the, um, all the mods that they're planning on releasing for the syndicates, I figure it's about time I say something about it. So, syndicates. For those of you who are not aware, which you probably are if you're watching this channel, uh, syndicates are factions that you can join. Um, and you can represent them through a sigil. Wherein that sigil gives you more reputation points towards them, and when you reach the end of a rank, you offer a sacrifice, you go up in rank, and you get more goodies from them. Um, basic premise is pretty simple. It's, your, it's kind of an end gamey system that... I guess in a sense it is grinding, but it's meant to be more passive grinding, although obviously everyone went head-on into the whole system. But uh, I, I like the, the idea of having something that's just always leveling up in the background, always just going in the background. To kind of add a bit of depth to what you're doing and give a little bit of motivation for what missions you choose to do. Um, so I'll start things off first with the mods that we get with these. As you can see right here in the video, I am using the Tesla Link mod, which Parent Sequence and Cephalon Suda both offer. Uh, these augments are pretty awesome. So far, I have Tesla Link and I have um, Hall of Malevolence. Hilariously enough, I traded for those. <laughs> um, I will... Very soon, I will be hitting the uh, next rank of Steel Meridian, which is the main one that I uh, focus on. So I'll be able to tell you guys about the weapon mods as soon as I get those available. But uh, the Warframe mods are pretty dramatic in their effect. Um, as you can see here, Tezzelink completely changes how you play Valvin. You can rig him up entirely for Tezzels now. Because these will be doing slash damage instead of just electrical. That's huge. And you can make some pretty ridiculous rigs like this right here. And uh, needless to say, I kind of enjoyed this a little bit too much. But, uh, yeah, it has a pretty big effect on how you play your frame. It's kind of like getting a new ability without having to go out and get a new ability. Uh, there's also some other really good ones out there. Hollow Malevolence is pretty wild on, uh... It's more of a straight buff, if anything, but it's pretty wild on, uh, Mirage. As for hers, that's every time you kill something, your shadow, or your Mirage... Your clones, god words, your clones get more, uh, more powerful until they wear off. Uh, dive Bomb Vortex is another one I want to get into. When you do a Dive Bomb, enemies get sucked into it briefly. Uh, Furious Javelin looks pretty wild, where every enemy you kill with uh, Radio Javelin jacks up your melee damage temporarily. That looks pretty awesome. So it's pretty cool stuff, and we're going to be getting more for uh, a lot of the secondary abilities for a lot of the frames, and a few of the tertiary ones, so that should be pretty good. Um, so those, I love them. Weapon mods that I've seen out there, getting on that subject. Um, I have not used any yet, so I'm really not in too much of a position to talk about them much. But I really like some of them, especially the additive crit chance bonuses we get. Um, the Steel Meridian ones actually motivated me to take the Sobek and uh, polarize it up to the max, which I will be doing an Arsenal video of that as soon as I get the Steel Meridian mod I need. But um, it breathes new life into a lot of weapons I would normally ignore. Like the single Furious with uh, New Loka, you can get two life back per head. And considering that's a complete bullet hose of a gun, that's awesome. You can rig it up specifically to get your life back and use your primary for your damage output. That's awesome! I mean, put that on a Necros that has Soul Survivor where you can soul punch people back to life. You're kind of the ultimate medic, in a sense. Um, the mechanic for each faction, though, is... I, I don't know what to think of it. Granted, I haven't seen it in action yet, so I kind of have to reserve my judgment a bit. But... You gain uh, affinity tied to that weapon, and uh, once you hit, I believe, 2,000 of it, you create an area of effect burst. Um, each faction has a different uh, damage type for that burst, and there's also a secondary effect to it, uh, which is either you know one element for your burst, plus you get back 25% of your health, energy, shields, uh, and there's one other that I can't remember offhand. So, the secondary effect is pretty awesome. I don't know what to think about the damage burst out of it, because it's... I really need to see how big is the radius on that and how how viable is it because if the uh, like on shotguns that's probably great like when you have the heck or the sobek which are two of the shotguns that can be modified that's awesome 
But if we're talking something like sniper rifles, like the Volker, with the dead aim bonus, sure, you might be getting some benefit that I'm not entirely sure what it is yet. But you won't be damaging anybody with your burst because it's a sniper rifle. So, I know it's, it or, originates on the player, so we'll, we'll have to see how that works out ultimately. If they change that to originate on the shot that you fire at that point, that would be great. It'd be where you'd want it to be. So what else we got here? Oh yeah, the sacrifice. I guess I might as well talk about that next. The sacrifices are, um, they're pretty big sacrifices, although I have one major complaint with that. Uh, to get to tier 3, you have to sacrifice an orc and catalyst. Uh, this is, when I see that, and I'm already dealing with it again with Red Veil because I've ranked them up, um, I really feel like the Catalyst should be a rank 4 or a rank 5 uh, sacrifice and not a rank 3. Because you get to, for example, Steel Meridian, you get to going from 3 to 4 is just a Boar Prime Barrel. That's not really that big a deal in comparison. Any, any um, part out of the Void, any Prime Weapon part is really not that big a deal. So that just seems a little bit off to me. I feel like that should be rank 4 and 5, I believe, is a prime weapon entirely. Don't quote me on that one. I can't remember exactly what the big top tier stuff is because I'm not there yet. But it just seems a little off that the single rarest item in the game is, uh, you know, your, your sacrifice for that rank. It seems a little bit early. Especially now that we have, um, they multiply the reputation gain by 10 and capped it off at 2,000 plus 2,000 times your mastery rank. Um, which I like this, I think the pacing might actually be a tad too fast, because you can cap off an entire syndicate in a couple days if you really wanted to. But it, it does give you a motivation to keep ranking up your mastery though. Which I really appreciate that, because beforehand there really was no reason to turn your mastery rank up once you got past mastery eight. You get to eight, you've got all the weapons unlocked, you're set. Now, for someone like myself, I'm at Mastery 16, the last day of ranks I've done meant nothing other than I think I got one extra extractor, two extra extractors, and uh, two extra loadout slots, which really, you only really need four loadout slots to really function in the game. The other slots I have are literally used up for my characters on the channel. But um, it gives us a legitimate reason to really push and get our mastery up so we can get more reputation a day, get more mods out of it, and you know, fun stuff like that. So I think that's really well, um, pretty well done there, although I still believe the rep is a little too fast. Can't really complain too much. So we'll see, we'll see where this all, where this all pans out in a few weeks here, a month or two here. That might get adjusted again for all we know. So, yeah, um, overall, I'm really enjoying this system. I, I was surprised how much it really, uh, I, I was pretty surprised how much it prior maybe prioritized things in my playstyle. So and I'm finding myself using new weapons because they've got the um, the augments down the line. I can get like the Sobek, for example. That was a shock, and I avoided it like it was just the worst disease made by man. And um, thanks to the new st the new mods that we've got, having a base 35% status chance really changed my mentality about that gun. And not to mention, we got the new fire rate mods, which actually makes the Sobek really, really good. But, I think that's enough rambling for now. It's just my thoughts on the subject. I, It's a pretty nice system. It's got work that needs to be done. Um, the big thing is, we're going to have to wait and see what the new mods are going to be like. Because if we're getting... The way it sounds, I'm saying this from viewing the design council right now. Uh, the way it sounds, we'll be getting... Just about every single ability in the game will have at least one augment. I'm hoping they'll have multiple augments, augments per ability. That will really get things where I want them to be and let us do some fun stuff like, let's say you can get Tesla Link and maybe they'll make some other augment that's like, okay, you throw three Teslas at once in an arc. I'm like, okay, cool. So I can instantly just throw out Tesla um, Links all over the place. That would be pretty fun stuff. I'd really enjoy that. So we'll have to see where it all... Uh, where it all ends up at the end of the day and i will definitely get a video up on the subject when it is available so syndicates do i like them absolutely need a little bit of work i absolutely like them so this is mitch with the department of bad ideas signing off